Hello there, and welcome to Success as a Student, a skills podcast for students and anyone who wants to develop key skills that will help them in being successful. My name is Alexander Wood. I create online skills content for the University of Derby. Outside of work, I'm a trustee, a chairperson of a youth group, and the University of Derby Graduate of the Year. In this series, we focus on how you can develop skills that will help you to succeed in your university study, your career, and in your personal development, all by interviewing experienced University of Derby staff and successful students. In today's episode, I am interviewing the amazing Tyra Tucker about her experiences and advice for enterprise and networking. Tyra won Enterprising Student of the Year in 2020 for her business Cultures Group and was recently awarded runner-up for Graduate of the Year 2021 in the Career and Employability Awards at the University of Derby. Having aced her undergraduate degree at the University of Derby, Tyra is now studying Diplomatic Studies at the University of Oxford. Okay, so hello Tyra and thank you very much for coming on to the Success as a Student podcast. Would you just like to introduce yourself to the audience listening in today? Hello, Alex. Thank you so much for having me on. My name is Tyra Tucker. I recently just graduated from Darby University, and I first moved to Darby from Los Angeles, California. And the question that I always got when I arrived in Darby first was, Tyra, why would you move from LA to Darby? And it was always a hard question to answer because I knew the answer would never satisfy anybody. But the reason I did go to Darby University was because they had international relations and diplomacy. And I was so, so passionate about diplomacy. No other university had it but Darby. And when I first arrived, it was definitely a different experience. I've never been to Darby before. Um, Funny enough, I lived in Sheffield the previous year. And when I was in Darby and I was going through the university, I saw all of these amazing opportunities. And one of the opportunities that really stuck out to me was Be the Boss. This was an opportunity to create my own business, which was always a dream come true of mine. But also at the Darby University, they had internships. So we had this one internship called e-bikes, and that was the first electrical bike scheme in the country. It was the biggest one. Um, Sorry, not the first one, but the biggest one. And I remember being interned for that. I also got to be on BBC Radio Darby in Sheffield, do open days, volunteer at the Darbyshire Chinese Um, center, uh, Darby Worldwide. There were so many different opportunities and different experiences that I had when I was studying at Darby Uni. So something that I think you did very well, which is something that is one of the reasons why I wanted to interview today is because when you were at the University of Derby, you took and you made a lot of opportunities for yourself. And actually, you ended up winning Enterprising Student of the Year for the amount of things that you did and for your business and how you went about creating those opportunities. So Would you like to talk a bit more about the opportunities that you made for yourself? Yeah, when I first saw Be The Boss, which I I would say was the first opportunity that I really went for, I remember seeing Be The Boss on Udo and I was like, what is this? And I went to the class where they just kind of gave a brief introduction and it was so interesting to kind of see this opportunity where they're going to pay you they're going to give you money to start your own business what is this like this is insane they didn't have this in america and i felt so blessed and i was like i have to go after this opportunity and i wasn't sure how to do it because it was my first year in university and i was still kind of finding my foot on the ground studying in a different education system but for me i think when i see opportunities and i see a way to really make my dreams come true there's so many reasons why i shouldn't do it but then there's also so many reasons why I should. And for me, I just have to try. I just have to see how is this going to go? What can I do? Um, Even if I'm going to suck at it, or even if I'm going (laughs) to completely fail. I think for me, I just, when I see an opportunity, it's just too exciting to walk away from and be the boss for me was definitely one of those opportunities. Yeah, it's really good that you managed to take the opportunity in your first year. I know that myself, when I was in my first year, I missed a number of opportunities and only started taking them later on. How did you go about convincing yourself to make this leap and to go about it and actually do it? How did you push yourself over the edge? Well, that's a really interesting question. And you just brought back a memory of mine. I was really secretive about doing Be The Boss <laughs> when I was in my first year. I didn't tell anybody. I just remember like going to all these workshops every single Thursday. And it was exhausting because I had class like right before that. So it's always about 10 to 15 minutes late. And for me, I think that it was really just about, as I said before, 
just trying it, seeing how this works out um, and learning. I think for me, one of my mindsets, especially in my early days at Darby was you just have to try new things. And Mm -hmm this is how you grow. This is how you learn. And for me, it's always been about learning to be better, um, to expand my knowledge, to expand the skills that I want to develop, the person that I see. So I'm sure we all have this kind of ideal version of ourselves. And all of these different opportunities that come my way and come your way, they're an amazing opportunity to be able to reach your ideal self, to meet this image that you have of yourself and build those skills and that vision that you see. It's really interesting, actually, because I've done a number of episodes on skills that would make a successful student. And you've just shown how you've hit a number of them. You've shown that you've got a growth mindset. You've shown that you are free to fail. And you took an opportunity when you could have easily not done because it caused an inconvenience. You said you were late for class. You could have easily turned around and thought to yourself, well, you know, this is an excuse, I'm not going to do it, but you went for it anyways, which is amazing. So you said that you set up your own business as part of Be The Boss. How did that go? And how was that like studying alongside uh, having your own business? That was the hardest part because that requires adaptability and flexibility and a lot of passion. (laughs) When I first had the idea of Culture Scoop, so I guess we can kind of go like from the beginning, right? This was Be The Boss's second year. We had a different program director at the time for it. And I remember not having my idea fully developed. So Culture Scoop, it's a website that has different videos, blogs, and photos about world cultures. And we create our own content, but we also work with other people from around the world. And it was really difficult to understand what did I want my website to be? What topics did I want my website to have? There's so many cultures in the world, which ones do I tackle? And no one really understood my vision. And even in Be The Boss, it was such a great opportunity. But I remember in the beginning, the guy was telling me, okay, so this is a travel website. So you're gonna offer like different travel, like stays and different things like that. Like his idea of my idea just was not the same. And keeping my idea (laughs) and being like, no, this is what I wanna do. And everyone's trying to wrap their head around it. You know, it, it was really difficult. How did you find it studying alongside running your own business? Yeah, that was a lot of work. It took a lot of self-discipline. And I feel like I've always been, and this is still my struggle today, caught up between loving academia, but loving working, loving creating projects, loving doing things that aren't reading books all the time. (laughs) I love creating. And because it was my first year, obviously you have the opportunity to maybe do more things because your grades doesn't go to your final year. But the moment I got into my second year, I had to put it on the back burner for a bit. And that was heartbreaking because every single moment I wanted to work on it. And sometimes you just can't do both. And that was something that I really, really struggled with was that I can't do it all, even though I want to do it all. So there might be some days where my academics, I was reading a lot, but then I'd be up till three in the morning, just trying to edit the website or sending out emails. Um, And for me, and this is the best part about university, you can find people you can work with. You can get a team. You're not alone. And it took a while for me to build a really good team in Darby Uni. It just started off with one girl, Marquetta, and she was doing her um, third year marketing and business. And I remember putting on LinkedIn, like, I need help, someone who wants to join me. And Marquetta was like, I'm so passionate about this idea, your website, I've seen it. Like, I want to join, like, I want to help you. And And the moment that I got her help, everything changed. And I honestly still thank her to this day. She's a really good friend of mine. I tell her, if you did not come and help me, I don't think this would have happened because building a website might not seem like a lot of like time or energy. It might be like, oh, that's a week thing, a month thing. But my idea, my vision for Culture Scoop, it took Honestly, I did not launch the website until my final year of university. So started from the first year and didn't launch it until the last because that's how much time and effort and energy it took. But alongside trying to do that with my studies. So when so it took you a long time between starting it and launching it. Did it look the same as the first idea that you had when you first came up with it? No way. It changed <laughs> so much because I my mind is very oh gosh (laughs) the 
the way I look at things. I'm so extra, like extra, extra. So when I first started with Culture Scoop, I wanted to do, I think it was maybe 10 topics and God knows how many countries I wanted to cover. It was just way too much. It was, I was trying to do the impossible. I told myself, I'm not going to launch this website until I have over a hundred content available to put on the website for the launch. It was just so extra. And I didn't realize sometimes it's best to just start small and build and build and build. So I would say that my idea narrowed and the reality of what I can do became so much more realistic the more that I tried to meet these high goals that I had and it just didn't work. So I had to come back down to reality and understand what I can and can't do. That's that's actually really similar to what my projects start off with. I start with great ideas and then I'm like, I've actually got to do this now. Yeah. (laughs) You get start small. (laughs) And they change a lot as well as you go. So yeah, it's interesting to see if yours did the same. And I'm glad that we found similar experiences with that. Um, you also mentioned how other people were trying to interpret your idea. How did you manage to keep your idea yours? That was hard because sometimes when your idea isn't fully developed, it's very easy for other people's comments and other people's opinions to change that idea. And I think that's why in the beginning, I was so private about Culture Scoop because I was so worried about what people would say. And you need criticism, don't get me wrong. But Sometimes when you're so passionate about something, to hear someone's feedback can really hurt and change everything for you to the point that sometimes you don't even want to do it. But I remember sitting in um, the new manager's office, Ola, and I was telling her, I was like, Ola, I'm so passionate about this, but everyone's saying that I should make it like this and it should be this travel website and this is how you profit and all of these things. And she was like, Tyra, stick to your idea. And honestly, if it wasn't for her, I'd I don't think I could have done it. <laughs> like, There's so many people that have helped me along this way. There's going to be a lot of name dropping in this podcast because it wasn't just, you know, a, a one person show. It was a lot of amazing mentors, friends that helped kind of help me keep my idea and push me to continue chasing my dreams of building this website. It's interesting because I feel the same about my projects, but when I'm sure when you started, it was your idea. You started alone and over time you built up and you got these people in was that what happened yeah I would say that when I first had the idea for culture scoop I was 15 so this was back when I was in LA that I'd begun like the website actually but there were so many trial and errors with that and my idea wasn't fully um developed so when I got to the be the boss program it became more developed but as I started to speak to experts in the field and started to kind of do more research and understand what I needed to research and what I needed to look at, then the idea became so much more developed. But not only that, I think it helps me really figure out, okay, this is the direction that I want to take it. And then this is the end goal. There was a lot of classes that I took. There was a lot of videos that I've watched. There's so many different things that I've read. It's not a thing where you wake up and then you have all the answers. It's actual work. I would say a startup is more work to start up than when you're actually probably (laughs) in the motion of it because you're not sure where to start and that was I think my issue in the beginning for sure. I think your story with Culture Scoop is really inspiring and how you started that up from scratch and how you over that over time you built and you got people involved and you had support and I think that's really useful but it's also worth mentioning that whilst you were doing Culture Scoop especially in the later years you weren't just that wasn't the only thing you had on at university at the time was it you were doing other things as well yeah I've always been this person that just does more than one thing in many different aspects I mean at the same time I was doing culture scoop I probably completed about three internships at my time in Darby um as well alongside doing BBC radio Darby and just volunteering during the summer I mean I was everywhere (laughs) and it wasn't bad I mean I everything I do I love I love so much that it doesn't even feel like working I can stay up all night long but I have to be honest at the same time and say I did burn out a couple times and for me I at the time when I was in Darby University I didn't have a good mindset when it comes to rest when it Mm. comes to taking breaks I didn't understand what that was I am definitely the definition of a workaholic I can admit that right now and it wasn't until my final year that I remember telling myself okay this is my final year 
we're about to graduate. I have so much on my plate. I'm filming for Culture Scoop. Oh, I have to go do this interview for maybe Darby Uni. Oh, I need to be on the radio the next day. I mean, like every day it was something. Or I have to go do this presentation. And like, it was crazy. It was so, so busy. And for me, I didn't take the time to take care of myself, mm -hmm. to make sure that I'm eating properly, resting. Um, I do feel like I had a great social life. So I'll give myself <laughs> that. <laughs> I definitely had fun. But um, I would say taking care of myself was something that towards the end of all these projects and when I was about to graduate really, really kicked in. And I think if there's anything that anyone can leave with is take care of yourself like that mentally, physically, spiritually, that's what comes first before mm -hmm. everything else. I had a moment similar to that um, burn out in my second year because uh, I saw I, I didn't take opportunities in my first year so I was catching up and playing catch up on it and in my second year I had loads of things happen at once and I got totally burned out and so I relate to a lot in the sense of always having something on always having something to do but I always try to make sure I took care of myself a little bit as well and I think that's really important advice that you're giving there and I think it's really useful to do that so Nowadays, how do you take care of yourself? Because I know you're really busy at the moment. Currently, have you done anything to try and take care of yourself whilst being enterprising and busy with all your opportunities and things? Yeah, currently right now I'm studying at the University of Oxford. And as anyone could imagine, it is very, very rigorous. And <laughs> they make sure that you can stay up 24 hours trying to finish a reading list. That's almost impossible. <laughs> um, and for me, when it comes to taking care of myself is making sure that I'm eating all the time, like having my lunch, my breakfast, my dinner, going out with friends when I'm tired, not pushing myself to the extreme burnout and saying no that is yeah. still something that I hate to do because as I said I love opportunities and I'm passionate about so many things so one could imagine when someone says oh Tyra here's this amazing opportunity do you want to do it like how can I say no to that but I would say for me it's really being especially now in tune with my body if I'm feeling stressed if I'm feeling overwhelmed I take a step back and I'm saying is there too much on my plate am I maybe needing to put something off am I needing maybe to take some time off so I think that is something that's really really important and having a good balance um some days I do need to work harder than I would like to but then also there are opportunities where I can take the day off maybe I don't really need to do that extra project um so it's it's still when I'm learning Learning, but I would say every single semester there's something new to learn <laughs> 100% every day is a learning day something that you actually did which I think relates to well-being that really impressed me was for this podcast as an opportunity that came your way and being interviewed for this you negotiated that so rather than I initially just a date that would have occurred when you were busy and you decided to try and negotiate that date with me to make it well today I guess and actually that's a really good thing that you can do and I would recommend doing the same but yeah, I think that's a really good way of actually taking care of yourself and also taking opportunities is seeing if there's any flexibility there and you exercise that when doing the, when going for this interview. Yeah, you're right. And that's an enterprise skill, actually, when it comes to flexibility and adaptability. Um, next week, I'm interviewing someone and he does podcasts, actually. And we were trying to make a meeting time. And it's very difficult because obviously we're in Corona. Some people are out of the country. You have different time zones and trying to work with your own schedule and work with someone else can be difficult. And I would say you want to be always considerate towards that person's schedule. And that can be so hard when you're so busy and there's so many things to do because you're like, oh, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. But I think when you can find a great middle ground with someone and work with them and just make sure that you get the outcome, always talk as well. Not everything needs to be. Sometimes we feel like there's this um, we put this imaginary pressure on ourselves, right? Like, oh, this needs to be done now. This has to be done this week. If this isn't done, the world is going to end. And yep. it's not that case. Like we negotiated this great, we we got a time, right? It took about a couple months, but <laughs> we, got, we got time. So I think, you know, there's no rush and work with yourself and work with others. Definitely. I think it's, you've given some great advice there. So Tyra, you won Enterprising Student of the Year 2020, which is an amazing achievement. So how would you advise other students develop their enterprise skills whilst at university? My number one advice is just do it. That is what I've said for the past three years in my time at Darby Uni, just do it. Because a lot of times we don't go for these opportunities. We don't go for new things because they're scary 
I mean, I understand every, everything that I've done. I've been terrified. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm just, I'm going to get fired. I'm going to like, I'm going to mess up. I'm going to say the wrong thing. You know, you get so terrified, but the more you put yourself out there, the more confident you become. It is just fact being having done so many presentations spoken to so many influential figures and especially now being at the university of oxford i'm 21 now i'm the youngest of my class everyone in my class is diplomats and i think if i did not do the things that i did in darby university with putting myself out there so much trying new things being in a room full of these practitioners that are brilliant that are well connected that are their minds you should see their minds like you know it's it's insane and all of these things have helped prepare me to be ready for my time at Oxford. So this is super important. I mentioned this before as well. These are just the stepping stones. So the more you do new things that scare you, that dream that you have, that goal that you have, it becomes so much more reachable and you feel so much more confident to be able to reach it. Yeah, I think that's really important. So definitely try and take them I think it's such it's difficult to take opportunities when you're nervous and I, I know I've been there and I, I look for excuses personally so I would when you talked about the be the boss uh, being on a Thursday earlier sorry not Thursday when you talked about how be the boss was going to clash with your lectures a little bit that my brain might have said that's an excuse I'm not going to do it and it's great that you that uh, you've learned just to take those opportunities and go for it even if you do get nervous and I get nervous tail taken do you still get nervous putting yourself out there like that all the time, all the time. I mean, even for this podcast, <laughs> you know, you just, you're, there's ability, I think that we're all quite confident sometimes in ourselves. But I think when we have to really be tested in our confidence, and we have to be vulnerable to see, can we actually do this? Is this, is this all in our heads? Or are we actually capable? And I think that's why I said, the more things you do, the more confident you become because you've done it so much. It's like walking, right? You know how to walk because you walk so much. But think about when you were a baby and you were crawling and then you would fall. And so it's it's the same thing for skills. It's the same thing for life. We all have to crawl before we walk. And the only way to be able to walk is to crawl and fall down and then get back up. And maybe you bruise yourself, but then you learn, right? Yeah. <laughs> It's definitely it's, it's i talked about the sort of similar analogy and growth in the growth mindset episode as well and yeah i i totally agree um you've got to be free to fail and be willing to put yourself out there where there's a chance that you might get rejected and if you do so what go again go for something else you know exactly alex i mean you said it so perfectly and i would say one thing that i've really learned is just not to be afraid of no do you know how many times i've gotten no do you know how many times i've emailed people and they never email me back yeah. like rejection and i are best friends i i'm used to rejection I, rejection doesn't hurt my feelings there's always something to either learn from being rejected or it's just not your opportunity it's just not meant to be so for me rejection and I, I love it. Like, bring it on. You want to reject me? Okay, I'll go find the other opportunity. I'll go try again. And the more you get comfortable with being rejected, with being told no, oh my gosh, you can do anything. Yeah, and you get rejected for things and eventually someone will say yes. And you will, if you just never went for that, you, you've missed out on a huge opportunity. So yeah, amazing. And you'd be surprised when people do say yes, even if you've got no hope yourself of getting it, if you put your effort in and go for it. So many doors have been open for me that I never expected. I'm sure you found the same by just putting yourself out there. Yes, exactly. And I remember a lot of people. I had um, an intern of mine for Culture Scoop, and she was talking to me about networking and trying to put herself out there as well. And she was so nervous to just add people on LinkedIn and to make a note. And I was like, this this is basics. This is easy. Like you just write something nice, Google how to, you know, send a nice note on LinkedIn, edit it a little bit, tell them about yourself and then send it. And I remember her doing that. And then at two, three days later, she contacts me. She says, Tyra, I've made so many different connections. We're talking now, this person from that institution and this institution. And I was like, exactly. So I think that fear of rejection is sometimes so strong and paralyzing, right? That we don't even want to do it. But I think when we do put ourselves out there um and maybe you're not afraid to see what would happen you never know and i definitely encourage everyone to try it mm -hmm. try something that scares you definitely so that's one thing you do then if you see an opportunity you go for it i'm just wondering because i think you've got an enterprising mindset what type of things you do when you have an opportunity come your way 
Yeah. Well, something about me is I like to create my own opportunities. And when I do have an opportunity, I'm very passionate about it. So I'll start with the first one when it comes to creating opportunities. I've never been this person that's just going to sit down and wait for someone to knock on my door to tell me that they want me to do something, to be part of something. If I'm passionate, if I have an idea, if I want to learn more, you're just going to end up finding out about me. I'm just going to end up in your little world because I'm going to push myself in there. And this first started when I was 15. And at the time I wanted to study psychology. That was what I was really passionate about. I look back at it now and (laughs) it's completely different field I'm in. But at the time I wanted to do psychology and I applied to three different places, three different clinical psychology places in California. And two of them got back to me and they're like, this is I was 15. They're like, you're too young. (laughs) We only do like master's students, PhD ones, you know, that want to be doctorates. We don't, we don't hire high schoolers. (laughs) And I was like, okay, okay. Um, The other one was like, yeah, we just, we're not going to accept you. Sorry. Then there was one Southern California neuropsychology clinic. And I remember being like, actually I was 14. And I, my mom called him because she was like, Tyra, they're not, they don't do internships. They're not going to hire you. And I was like, let me just see if I can get an internship. So she called and she was like, do you guys do internships? And the guy was like, yeah, yeah, we do. Just tell her, tell her to send her her CV and, you know, an email. And I did, I sent my CV, I sent my email and he was like, come in for an interview. Um, And funny enough, I remember sitting there being interviewed by him and he's like, what do you see yourself doing in the future? And I was like, I want to go to the University of Oxford. I want to do psychology. (laughs) I mean, I got to the University of Oxford, but I didn't do psychology. And I remember after I got accepted for that internship, the way that my mindset shifted, the way that I was like, you know what, if there's something that I want to do, I will contact this person, I will go out of my way to do it. And from that moment on, that is how every single big opportunity that I've ever gotten happened was because I was like, you know what, I'm interested, I'm passionate, I'm going to connect with them, I'm going to call them. And That can be terrifying because Mm -hmm. once again, we go back to the saying that you might get rejected, but at the same time, there's nothing like creating your opportunity. And I think Culture Scoop for me was the biggest opportunity that I created because it led to other opportunities. It led to things that expanded beyond opportunities that didn't even know existed. So I definitely think it's so important that if you don't have an opportunity right now, if you're thinking about creating that YouTube channel, if you're thinking about that podcast, if you're thinking about that business and you know, no one's hiring you, there's no internships, there's no job, go do it yourself. And then watch that opportunity that you created for yourself expand into something that you can't even imagine, right? Like for me right now, because of Culture Scoop and everything I learned from it, being in Oxford, my media training teacher, he saw my website and he said, Tyra, we're doing this thing in the Oxford IT Learning Center. And if you want to give a talk about how to create websites, how to do digital skills, I invite you to do talks. So I've got the talk and then I started to do it. There was over 50 Oxford faculty, staff, students there learning from me how to have digital skills. And I'm like, how is this possible, right? But it's because I made my own opportunity, which brought in more opportunity. That entire point, like, wow. (laughs) That's just amazing. Um, you sound like the opposite of me when I was 15. So when I was 15, I uh, wanted to get a job in law and I refused to call up the law firm. When I was 18, I refused to call up any law firm to see if they had any experience for me because I said, well, why would they give me experience? And I never did it. I never even did it. I never took the phone off. I never made that call. At the age of 18, I went to go for pro- I wanted to be a program rep. I wanted to represent my course. I didn't stand for it because I thought, I can't, I'm not good enough. I'm not going to do it. And you were, you were the opposite for me at the age of 15. And I learned the skill, whereas you must have learned it well a lot earlier than me. So yeah, wow, that's amazing. So if you are, if you don't have enterprise skills, one, from my perspective, you can develop them. I have a lot of regrets in my life that if I had your mindset as early as you did, I probably wouldn't. Well, it's never too late. And you know what? I'm still learning myself. There are so many things that I don't know about myself yet. I'm 21. Like I've had so much different experience obviously doing these great things at such a young age and kind of building my dreams. But I think especially being with at Oxford University, for instance, and being around people that are that have done great things. I mean, things that are changing the world and watching them, observing them, learning from them is what is shaping me to this day. So each experience that we have 
each each person that we meet shapes our point of view, shapes our mindset. We see different skills from people that we want to embed in ourselves and we can learn from them. So I have some amazing people in my course that when they speak, I'm like, how did they structure that? How did he ask that question? And then I learn. And I think that's what I can encourage anyone. It's not really about getting these accolades or getting these opportunities. It's about learning and developing yourself. And if you have that passion to be a better person, anything you want can be yours because you're not going to be so afraid of rejection or you might not be so afraid of trying something new because you want to develop, you want to grow. And that's the end goal. It's not accolades. It's not recognition. It's not, you know, money. It's being the better person, being the best version of yourself. It's amazing. <laughs> I think it's great. So what I think is really inspiring, what the points that you've just made there is, rather than waiting for someone to knock on your door an opportunity you actually you knock at other people's doors and that's something that i've learned to do you knock at other people's doors and say give me this opportunity and that's how you get it and you said it loads already people might say no but oh well there's the next door knock 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 hi give me this opportunity no okay next door and eventually they let you in and that's why you're successful and the second thing you mentioned there that i think i'd like to pull out is learning from others i I think that's you learn every day from others, 100%, especially if you get yourself in the rooms where you can learn from amazing people. As a trustee of a charity, I am learning so much from the people who are in that charity. I'm lucky every time I've, I'm there to to see how they phrase things, to see how they structure feedback, and I'm picking that up from them. This podcast series, I've learned so much from all the guests, but that's because you put this, I put myself in the room where it happens, and I'm learning so much from you already, Tyra. So yeah, I totally agree with that point. So... The next question that I'd like to ask is actually about networking. So you mentioned already that you are now at the University of Oxford and you're networking with all these amazing people who, to some people, they may be intimidating because they've got all these success, they're brilliant. How do you get over that? How do you go and approach them to network? Yeah, I mean, we, in my course, I study diplomacy, we have ambassadors every single week coming down to talk to us. And sometimes it can be so terrifying, right? To ask them a question and to network with them. And you know, what was so interesting. We had the UK ambassador to Italy and she came in and she was talking in the beginning and she was just so normal to put it <laughs> you know you you see ambassador you're like wow this person represents their country you know an ambassador is at such a high position it's such a high title um a respectable one and she was just there talking and it felt so casual it felt like just talking to any other person and her calmness her demeanor was so welcoming that when it came time to ask her a question I was sharing my story with her about how I almost moved to Italy to do my master's and then you know it was great conversation it was networking it was connecting and I think that's something we get wrong about networking is that we think that oh my gosh there's the big boss like we got to go in we got to show them all we know we got to like put our best foot forward and it's human to human right we're all humans strip away the title strip away the accomplishments in the end of the day this person's a human and they have something to learn from you just as much as you have something to learn from them and I think when I stopped kind of feeling so nervous about networking with really high influential people was because I was like, wait, this person's human too. And we, we're so passionate about maybe the same topic or we, we have this in common, you know, that's what networking is about. It's about connecting. And that is probably my favorite activity to do. I'm on the board of excellencies for the diplomatic society. So it's literally my position to network, to bring in influential people on the board from presidents to ambassadors, to diplomats, to academics and scholars. That's literally my role. And if there's one thing that I've learned about networking and speaking with these influential figures is literally just connect with them. Just speak to them as you would any other human. Obviously respect their title, <laughs> you know, don't just say anything. But in the end of the day, look at them as human and your heartbeat will just slow down and you can talk normal. <laughs> yeah. uh, definitely. I I think I need to get better at that. And honestly, I'm not, I haven't networked a lot much with a lot of people who are famous or influential in their areas as much as maybe you have and so I'm going to definitely take that on board when I'm contacting other people who have more of a reputation um so that's something I want to improve upon 
So that's more formal networking where you're networking with someone who's professional or someone who is important. What about networking and building up your own network? How do you do that? And how have you gone about building up your own network of people? Yeah, so let's go back to my time in Darby when I first just started out. I'm not going to lie to you, Alex. I was terrified of networking, like terrified of networking. (laughs) I remember my first networking event was first year, Be The Boss was hosting a networking event. I was excited. I had my blue dress on. I did my hair. And I was like, what am I going to say? Like, I, I had no idea what networking even was and I go there and everyone's talking about their business their dreams their hopes their wishes and I'm just silent I am silent and if you know me (laughs) I talk a lot (laughs) so me silent that's it's quite rare right it's a rare sight to see but I was so terrified and it wasn't until Ola, the Be The Boss mentor, she was like, Tyra, get out there more. Let's network together. So she was like, we're going to go to Sheffield. She was like, I'm paying for your train ticket. I'm getting you food. This is something we're going to experience together. And obviously she's done so much networking. She's had her own business. She's had her own accomplishments. So she kind of took me under her wing. And we went all around Sheffield and we were just networking with business people, photographers, a bunch of different types of people. And before networking, I she got she taught me some skills and I actually recommend like you can learn some things on YouTube. You can also Google these things on how to network. And I practiced talking about my business. I practiced um, introducing myself. This isn't just a thing I woke up and I was like, okay, I'm going to go network, you know, make your elevator pitch, sell yourself, come across well. And I think that's actually something really important to mention is that sometimes we think that all these things are scary, but they're scary because we don't know how to do them. We don't know where to start. So it's important that you learn where to start. So with Ola, she really helped me. And when we went to these networking events, I was speaking to a photographer And I was telling him about Culture Scoop. And I said, I always had this dream of having all of these beautiful models dress up in their country's traditional wear. And he was like, okay, this sounds interesting. Here's my card. If you want to do this, let me know. And I was like, okay, like, I'll email him. We'll see how this goes. My idea isn't like fully fledged. I have no idea how I'm going to do this, but let's, let's do it. So I emailed him and he was like, okay, I'll do it for free. And I'm like, wow. So we rented out Sheffield's Botanical Garden. um, And we did the whole photo shoot there. And it was so gorgeous. And he did that for free. And he messaged me. He's like, Tyra, this was amazing. If you want to do another like photo shoot, let me know. And I was like, okay. So I think a lot of times networking, it just happens quite naturally. But if you do come a little bit prepared and a little bit like you practice, then it's so, so great. And you know what, this brings me up to two more stories actually I would like to share. My friend, um, she's never networked and I joined this networking group and she said, I'll come with you. And she just, she joined me and she had her cards and she was excited, she was ready. And having her there and having me there as well, it was just so much more calming. So go with a friend maybe in the beginning, join different networking groups. You can find them on LinkedIn. Now everything's on Zoom. So it's even more easier than going in person, Um, but they're out there. And the last story that I'd wanna share um, is quite a funny one because I went to London because I wanted to attend this networking event that's about Generation Z, which is our generation, um, and how they like to travel. And I was like, cool, this is a networking event. Like, it's in London. I'm going to go. So I went, and I ended up at the World Travel Market. And you might not know the World Travel Market, but it's like this big expo. And this is like the networking heaven (laughs) of traveling, right? Like, every big corporation from airports to different attractions in different countries. I mean, we're talking world, like the whole world was there. And I didn't realize what I was walking into. I didn't realize I was going to the world travel market. So I was like, how am I going to, like, these were the people that I needed money from. These are the people that could sponsor me. These are the people that can make colleges go to the next level. And I was there and I was petrified. I was just going back and forth, walking back and forth, like, how did I end up here? I didn't even know this was the world travel market. And I was like, Tyra, you have to just, you have to just do it. (laughs) You have to put yourself out there. You have to like talk to these people in the booth. So I was like, you know what? I'll start with the United States because they're American. I'm American. Maybe it will calm my nerves. And I remember walking up there and I was so like, 
stumbling over my words, everything. And they're like, here's my card. If you need anything, let me know. And I was like, oh my God, what just happened? Did I just do this? Did I just network at the world travel market? From that moment on, I went to all of these other booths. I was sitting down. I started to talk to other people. Like it was crazy. So sometimes we're all terrified and networking is terrifying. And God probably didn't even tell me I was going to the world travel market because I wouldn't have gone. I would have been too chicken out to do it sometimes right but being in that position and learning and just getting out there once again I guess that's the theme for today is getting out there and just doing it can change your life and networking it's scary but the more you do it the easier it gets 100% um definitely I've now been in quite a few situations like that myself when I've taken an opportunity and then I'm like how did I get here how has this happened? Why am I here? Can I do this? You know, what, what am I doing? And then you have to give yourself some confidence and just do it. Um, yeah. What you said then reminded me a lot of that and that feeling. So something you've done then is you've given some really good examples of how you built up your network uh, outside of university for your business. But do you have any advice on how students can build up their network themselves? Yeah, I would say start with LinkedIn. What field do you want to work on? What's your interest? And who's who's in that field that you're interested in? That's kind of how I go about things. If I'm really passionate about, for instance, digital diplomacy, then I'm going to start reading different articles about digital diplomacy. I'll see who the author is. I'll copy and paste their name into LinkedIn. And then I'll reach out to them. And I'll say, hey, do you have maybe a brief time for a zoom call just to speak to you about something um and just introduce yourself and kind of weave yourself in there and we're so lucky today that we can just do it through digital technology we don't even need to like call we can just kind of send a linkedin message or a tweet to them or an instagram dm even sometimes and that's a great way to build your network so i would definitely say start with social media which is where everyone is um everyone that's especially important or someone in your field that you really admire mm. and that actually links to the next question that I'd like to ask you about which is about something that I know you do in your spare time which is in all honesty one of the things I think you do best from what I've seen externally which is you are really really good at sharing your success and promoting your brand to so the Thai Vitoka brand online so I, I I've not met with you in a year and a half now and I know that you've been successful I've seen quite a lot of the things that you've done and part of that is because of how you promote yourself and you promote what you do so first of all why do you spend time on social media posting about that sort of thing how does it help you to do that that is such a great question, Alex. Thank you. For me, when it comes to LinkedIn, there's a lot of people on that platform and I want them to know what I'm up to. So these are people that are my connection. These are either people that are influential in my own field or people that I want to work with or people that are one step away from giving me the next opportunity. So when I'm posting on LinkedIn and I'm telling people what I'm doing and what I'm up to, I'm showing them my skills. I'm showing them my experience. I'm showing them my own network. And then that is really attractive for more opportunities to come my way. And because of LinkedIn, I've had so many opportunities come my way. And it's really important that we do market ourselves and we do promote ourselves and we build this persona of who we are and our skills. And a lot of people, they might be like, oh, but I don't have too much to share or there's not, you know, so much going on. Well, this is a great opportunity for you to maybe get more engaged so you can have more things to post about or just start kind of building your CV, your persona um, slowly, bit by bit by bit. I think that relates to how we actually met. I'm just thinking back to that, which is actually, I think you added me on LinkedIn. I hadn't met you before. Both of us were studying in the same area. You were near below me. And our paths kept crossing, but we never really talked to each other. But both of us were seeing what each other were doing on LinkedIn. And I had this impression you were this random person who just was doing everything. And you would, when I think when we met, you're like, yeah, Alex, you're really involved too, aren't you? And we just have this idea that we're both of us were involved people who were doing things. And that's because of LinkedIn. I'd never spoken to you before. You'd never spoken to me before. And yet, we've both seen and liked each other's posts for ages because we were both involved and that's the power of it when i met you for the first time properly i was like this is tyra she's she's amazing look at all these things she's doing and that's linkedin when you market yourself, yeah. and yourself properly 
Literally. And I mean, the amount of friendships that you can create from LinkedIn, like imagine if we didn't connect on LinkedIn, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be here right now talking. <laughs> I, still, I still would have met you because we met as program representatives. But Oh, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> and I think we're both ambassadors as well. But So we would have still met, but without the same knowledge of this is this person and this is what they're doing. And then you almost want to talk to them. And it all it invites the conversation without actually going to this person and going, hi, I'm Tyler, look at all these things that I've done. Because I'd go, okay, cheers for telling me that. Whereas I came to the conversation knowing she's a bolt. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And one of the amazing things about Darby Uni is that like when they see that you're involved or you're interested, they love students like that. And I think if I didn't post about it, if I didn't share what I was doing, Darby Uni like wouldn't have given me so many opportunities, but they knew that I was eager and that I was ambitious and they wanted to help me grow. So I think that's another thing as well. People can see your passion. They can see your ambition and they want to help. Um, it's not always just sometimes, you know, us asking for help. There's people out there that genuinely do want to help. And I, I mean, Darby Uni for me was truly the best university because without them, I couldn't imagine getting into Oxford or doing all of these incredible things. They really, really were supportive. I think when they thought about opportunities, the people who gave them to you, they will have thought about you because they would have seen you. So when I was thought about enterprise, one reason why I think I thought about you to interview for this is probably because I'd seen you when I was thinking about it on social media, doing amazing things. It also helped that you were the enterprising student of the year, but I'd seen you on social media and then I remember you when opportunities come, come up because I've seen you and I might think of you first rather than someone else who hasn't been promoting what they do because that. And so, yeah, actually, it's really important to do it like that. So do you have any advice for anyone else who wants to promote themselves on social medias uh, or get themselves out there in the word of what they're doing? Yeah, I would say for your post, think about the objective of it. Who are you targeting? What what kind of tone do you want to set? So if you want to post, for instance, that you won an award, and I remember my friend, she messages me and she says, Tyra, I just got this amazing award, but I don't want to go on LinkedIn and brag about it. And I don't want to show off. And I'm like, yeah, you don't have to. But you can say like, first of all, that you're grateful for it. You know, how do you feel about it? Well, you're grateful. And secondly, you know, what does this award mean to you? Or what did it do? Or who gave it to you? So shout them out, thank them out. It doesn't always need to be, I, 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 this is what I'm doing. Um, sometimes, you know, build in your network, tag people, show that this was a group effort, thank the people that helped you. Um, so I would say when it comes to posting, that's a lot of things. A lot of times we think about how do we, how do we craft this without bragging? How do we craft this without sounding like, you know, over the top? And I think it just really comes down to how did it make you feel what does this mean for you? And who are you trying to get the attention of? And think about that when you're writing. I spent ages scrutinizing the post that I've sent out when I, if I've won an award, I'm like, how do I say this? And you spend ages trying to work it out. And yeah, because I'm definitely guilty of bragging and trying not to make it look like a brag, making it look like, look, here's me promoting my success so if an employer sees it, it's good. Um, but also not having everyone think, oh, they're just there bragging again. There's a balance to hold, isn't there? on that sort of thing yeah i mean there is a balance to hold but at the same time i believe if you're doing great things and you're doing great things like <laughs> you know haters are gonna hate yeah. <laughs> so in the end of the day like you can't downplay your success and if you are doing great things and do talk about it and i think one of the great platforms especially when it comes to linkedin is that people there are genuinely like interested and that's a platform for it Instagram, I do talk about like what I do, but probably LinkedIn has like everything that you want to see, like the CV. And I think, as I said, it goes back to the reason why you have LinkedIn. It's to connect with other people. It's to have it as your CV. It's not just, it's a, it's a correct platform for it. So I think there's definitely mm. a time and a place. Um, and you and I, we've even talked about all the time. Do we post what we're up to on LinkedIn? Sometimes there are things I do and they're great, but I'm like, I don't really feel like posting this today. I'll wait till my big win or i'll wait till this some this other thing that was really important to me and post about that um and it's hard to keep up with as well yeah i need to post on it more about what i do because i've not i only send a post when i've got a big win uh there's a lot of smaller things that i think i should be posting about which is a way of getting myself out there more and i think that's something that i want to learn from you as well is uh, that sort of skill and that and be able to do that more so as a successful student 
what advice do you have to another student who wants to be successful? I would say passion. That is just, it's a common theme in my life that keeps coming back. Everything I've done, I'm just so passionate because when you have love for something that you're embarking on, that you're creating, that you're working with, there's no feeling like it. It's what wakes you up in the middle of the night because you have an idea or it's what keeps you up until 5 a.m. because you're so passionate about finishing that project or that work or that assignment. So whatever you do, have passion with it, have love with it, and the rest will fall into place. And I would say for me, that is the driving force of everything that I've done. It's never been about awards or about even success or notoriety. Those things come so naturally. But because I'm passionate about what I do, that passion spills over. And when it comes to learning and improving myself, it's easier because I want to, because I want to be a better person and I want to be able to connect more with what I love. So yeah, number one thing, have passion for what you do. And as long as you have passion, it'll make the job easier. But you said about how you can stay up and do things because it's fun and you enjoy it. And it, yeah, and doing things that you enjoy and getting projects, if none exists that you can work on that you'll enjoy, as Tyra did, make your own. Give yourself that own opportunity. If there's something you want to work on, try it. See if there's anyone out there who will help you speak to the career service, especially the enterprise service they have. They can back you with opportunities. And I'm sure there's lots of people who will as well. Your academics might help you with that project if it's related to your school and your area uh, that you're studying in. Yeah, just go out there and make yourself that opportunity. Amazing advice, Tyra. So thank you so much for giving up your time today to come and talk to the podcast and share your story with students and applicants at the University of Derby. Thank you so much, Alex, for having me. And it's so nice to be speaking to you again. And I can't wait to visit Darby Uni, um, definitely after I graduate and just go down memory lane. I love, love, love Darby. It was the best three years of my life. Memories, the friendships I made, the people I got to meet, the opportunities. And I'm so, so grateful to have gone to Darby Uni. And thank you so much for having me on. I honestly feel so inspired after listening to and editing this podcast, and I'm sure you're feeling something similar. Tyra is just amazing, and it was great to hear her story and her nuggets of advice that she was able to give. Here, though, are the three pieces of key advice that I have cherry-picked from this episode. The first one is to try new opportunities and to see where they go. As Tyra said, often what may seem like a small opportunity can easily turn into something bigger, and you have no idea when you start out. The second piece of advice though links to taking new opportunities and this is probably the most fundamental thing which is to take care of yourself mentally, physically and spiritually. I believe that this is hugely important and should be remembered as your first priority. Whilst taking opportunities is amazing and can really help your CV, it can lead to burnout. So if you ever realise that you're doing too much, reflect and consider what actions you can take to help balance your well-being and your academic and personal development. The third and final piece of advice that I will pick out from this episode is that posting about what you do is powerful. So use LinkedIn and share your success, share your reflections and your experiences on your journey so far. This can be amazing for networking and also for finding opportunities that you can later take. I could have picked lots more points from this episode but that is all that I'll highlight. The next student focused episode that I will release links very nicely to this one. In that episode, I'll be interviewing successful student Scarlett Moss, the former elected Vice President of Education at the University of Derby, about how she learned to use her voice to make positive change. This episode was brought to you by the University of Derby Skills Team. Production, episode planning, and editing was completed by Alexander Wood. Thanks to Stephen Plant for creating the amazing graphics and for balancing the audio and to Lily Kent for transcribing the series. Thanks also go to Natalia Kodalavar and Naomi Bowers joseph for giving feedback and helping in the planning of the episodes. Thank you very much for listening.